Good morning. Waiting here by the Sarajevo City Hall for my ride up to the now abandoned Hotel Igman, which was part of the uh, Olympic complex here in Sarajevo back and for the uh, 1984 Olympics. And while we were waiting for the ride, I thought I'd point out this is the first one that I've seen thus far on my trip. What we have here is a they're called Sarajevo Roses now, but that is a location where a mortar or some kind of munitions would have detonated back during the Bosnian Wars that took place, or the Yugoslav Wars, I should call them, took place in the early 1990s. So we've got a look at a Sarajevo Rose. We're going to see a lot of other stuff that has been uh, affected by that war. So we're going to get a look around what is known as Hotel Igman or sometimes the Olympic Village Igman. It was initially a little village here for the Olympics and then after that for the remainder of the existence of Yugoslavia it was a sort of like a resort, um, winter resort etc. up here until the end, right, when everything broke loose and the war started in the mid-1990s and this place became essentially part of the front lines of that war. One thing you'll probably notice about this Olympic architecture along with a lot of the other buildings and structures that uh, hopefully we'll get to see in the video it's very angular, as you've noticed, and it has these kind of um, areas that jut out from the angles. So how would you describe that? I'm not sure. When it was in its prime, it would have had kind of a colorful facade, some of the some bright yellows and such up there. And this would have been where some of the Olympic athletes and their coaches, etc., would have been housed here at the uh, Igman Hotel back in 1984, where they did a lot of, right, right near the hotel, they did a lot of things like cross-country skiing and that kind of stuff. So maybe we will swing the camera around here and head in through the what appears to be the main entrance. Let's get everything set for that. Looks like we've got some more buildings up there that we could take a look at. But first, let's make our grand entrance here. I'm going to grab the mic. Sounds like my driver is uh, on the phone down below, but other than him and myself, of course, there's nobody here. To my knowledge. I can see that the, uh, the original floor has been somewhat busted up. Appears to be some kind of uh, natural stone, perhaps marble. And that's actually not my driver, that's somebody else. So I'm a little surprised to see two people down there chit-chatting. I'm not sure. Wow, 
what exactly they are doing here. So it looks like we had uh, sort of like an outdoor patio area. Running the whole length basically of this back area. And I don't know if you can see off in the distance there, it's quite obvious to me, the snowy peaks. We can walk along this part and see if we can get a shot of the back of this building, which is currently in the shadows. But uh, this site is quite impressive. Maybe you can hear. <laughs> Hear him talking on the phone over there. So it was quite a ride up here with me speaking English and him speaking Serbo-Croatian. Neither one of us having any idea what the other was saying. So here you have the back side. And I can see, don't know that you can, there's quite a lot of uh, scorching on this side of the building. You can see all of the, hopefully see all of the overhangs and angles. And this would have also had sort of like a cladding on it that was colorful, yellow colors. And I'll leave uh, in the description, I'll put a link in, in there where you can see Kind of a cool site that really details the uses of a lot of these different Olympic locations around Sarajevo. I'm trying to keep the camera so we're not pointing into the sun too much. But um, this part of the building over here, I can see pretty well and there's trees growing up on the balconies and such. So let's go into the sun. And lots of little window overhangs, or window, uh, I guess, pop-outs there. I can even see one that almost seems to have glass in it still. And uh, I'll show you what the mountains look like from here. So there's very little snow in this location right now, but Perhaps you can see off in the distance between those uh, pine trees where some of the ski areas are located and has snow cover right now. So we'll go in just a little bit here. Here you can see kind of a interesting ice formation from all of the water that's dripping off of these um, overhangs and such. These steps look like they are walkable. We won't go up too far here. Hopefully you can see those little white boxy windows kind of jutting out from there. Very unique architecture all around um, Yugoslavia, especially the Olympic stuff. But generally, I've learned Yugoslavia was known for having kind of a unique and um, well-developed, prominent architecture community way back when it was still a united country. I sure didn't have to come up too far into the shade there and really got cold. You can tell there's a huge difference in temperature coming up this little slope. And in this area, you can see there is some snow. So <laughs> found a very cold spot, breezy. And uh, this looks to be 
some sort of secondary housing structure here, probably used by, just like the other place, down below it, athletes, coaches, etc., partaking in some of the uh, nearby events. We again have these big balconies, overhangs, angular jut outs. Let's see if we can get anything from the other side of this building. Got some st concrete stalactites forming. Maybe you can see under that overhang how the concrete eventually starts to sort of leach materials like lime, I guess, out of it. I think it would be pretty cool if they decided to have another Olympics here and they fixed up some of this stuff from 84 and were able to use it again. And maybe they could even uh, use like the uniforms and stuff from that time. I think that'd be the way to go. Probably get some views, even in a, in a world where there's so much going on that it's kind of hard to pay attention to something like the Olympics in this day and age. We'll get a look at <clears throat> how much gunfire would have been happening in this area. You can see all of the uh, pock marks from bullets hitting this wall right here which is really lit up by the sun so up above you can see a lot of, a lot of gunfire was going on and then uh, down here maybe you can imagine what it would have been like be here when all of that fighting was going on. Certainly it is a nice view from this building which is a little higher up and I can really see those snowy mountains over there. It always looks better in person but hopefully you get a little bit of uh, the idea of what the views from the tops of these buildings would have been enjoyed by those athletes who lucky enough to be here and experience all of this stuff. Something I'm sure that uh, you just never forget if you have a chance to be a part of something like that.